These slides are an introduction to the numerical integration of ordinary differential equations for initial value problems. We start with a reminder that ordinary differential equations arise naturally from models of our physical world and have many applications in engineering. We give an example of a simple exact solution, and we also show that you can directly substitute a proposed solution into the ordinary differential equation as a way to verify that it is indeed a solution. Newton's law of motion is sometimes thought of as this simple algebraic equation when in fact it's really a differential equation because acceleration is the derivative of velocity with time. We could extend this one more time to find that velocity is the derivative of displacement, but for now we're going to keep it in this simple form of a single first order ordinary differential equation. We can rearrange it's about substituting f equals ma into this equation for a, and we get that the derivative of velocity with respect to time is the force per unit mass on some object. If we know the force as a function of time, and we have the initial velocity, we can at least in principle integrate this equation and get an equation for velocity as a function of time. Another application uh, comes from heat transfer. On the right, we see the depiction of an object in a stream of fluid. It could be a piece of metal that's being heat treated that's initially very hot and then it's dropped into a cooling bath or it could be an object that we're trying to heat up by putting it into some water for example we could be boiling an egg the cooling or heating rate is determined by the temperature difference between the surface of the object and the fluid uh, there's a proportionality constant h the heat transfer coefficient and the surface area a so the total heat transfer rate is determined by this equation, which is also called Newton's Law of Cooling. When it's primarily controlled by the convection from the surface, we get a particularly simple ordinary differential equation. We start with an energy balance. mc dt d time is the rate of increase in internal energy. That's equal to minus q because q is the heat loss. We're going to assume that the material is highly conductive, meaning that the surface temperature is equal to the internal temperature. Uh, that's not always the case, but when it is the case, we get this very simple differential equation. Or isolating the time derivative of temperature on the left-hand side, we get minus HA over MC, which is an inverse time constant, times T minus T infinity on the right. If we introduce a new variable theta as the temperature difference, we get a simpler equation because the time derivative of theta is the same as the time derivative of temperature. Equation 1 then becomes d theta d time is equal to minus ha over mc times theta. We get a time constant which is mc over ha and we can separate variables d theta over theta is equal to minus 1 over the time constant times dt. Fairly straightforwardly we can integrate this equation substitute our initial condition and we get an exponential decay of the temperature of the initial temperature difference theta naught or in terms of our original variables we get this relationship which is still an exponential decay. It's very convenient to have an analytical solution to test our numerical model. We're now going to just show quickly how you can verify that a solution or a trial solution is indeed a solution to initial value problem. For example, Let's consider whether y equal to 3t plus 1 quantity to the third power is a solution to differential equation dy by dt equals minus 1 over y squared with an initial condition y of 0 equal to 1. The first step is to evaluate the derivative of the proposed solution, and we get equation star. The derivative simplifies to 3t plus 1 quantity to the minus 2 third. We can then substitute our proposed solution into the right-hand side, 1 over y squared, and we also get the same equation, 3t plus 1 quantity to the minus 2 third. So when we substitute our proposed solution into the differential equation, the two sides agree, and we have, uh, we're confirming that this proposed solution does satisfy the differential equation. We have to also verify that the initial condition is met, which is relatively simple to show. Therefore, since y equals the quantity 3t plus 1 to the 1 third satisfies both the differential equation and the initial conditions, it is a solution. And since the differential equation is linear, it is the solution. 
In the next step, we're going to introduce the numerical machinery for solution of ordinary differential equations. We're going to derive Euler's method and demonstrate how it's used. Those steps are in the next set of slides.